I have no life. My brother Johnny took my life from me. I, I don't understand you. And now he's getting married. He has his. He's getting his. And he wants me to come. What is life? I didn't come here to upset you. They say bread is life. And, and I bake bread, 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 <clears throat> and I sweat and shovel this stinking dough in and out of this hot hole in the wall, and, and I should be so happy. Huh, sweetie? You want me to come to the wedding of my brother Johnny? Where's my wedding? Chrissy, over by the wall. Bring me the big knife. No, Ronnie. Bring me the big knife. I'm going to cut my throat. Maybe I should come back another time. No, I want you to see this. I want you to watch me kill myself so you can tell my brother Johnny on his wedding day, okay? Chrissy, bring me the big knife! Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode. Another busy, busy. Start over again. <laughs> 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 Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Cinema Beef Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Gary Hill. And with me today, you know, because you're supposed to do this last night, uh, we'll talk about that in the beef segment, but uh, beef with myself, people, is Suzanne. How you doing? I'm doing well from soon to be Fall Spring, Chicago. Oh, it's getting there. 53 yep. degrees on uh, Sunday. Lovely. Yep. Yep, we've got Fall Spring 1, and then we'll have uh, Winter Part 2, and then Almost Spring, and then Winter Part 3. Yep. Uh, you know how the seasons go here. There's 12 of them. T -t Talking about the weather, see? You, you must know you listen to this show then, see? It's, it's all, you know, <laughs> it's, all, it's all filler all the time, see? <laughs> but, um, yeah, to kill that, that vibe, it's just me and Suzanne today, so I'm going to ask Suzanne, what has she been watching lately? Oh, wow. Well, I caught the first two episodes of Hunters yeah. that I am uh, I am uh, loving. It's got some of the most brutal scenes I've seen in a long time. I, I mean, I have to admit, sometimes I think that they're just trying to offend at some points with it. But you know what? I'm good with that. I don't think so. Keep it coming. Because you, you, you and, only watched two. I've watched four. And I'll, I will tell you that as you get further into the show... It's the right blend of taking the subject matter serious and, and comic book at the same time. Yeah, because, I mean, it comes off slick like a graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And that's, I love it. I mean, it's shot beautifully. You can't beat the actors that are in it. My God. So many good it character is actors. Oh, I know. And we were talking about Saul, Ru I can't say his last name. Rubenek, yes. Rubenek. And Carol Kane, and I, I love Logan Lerman, and he's he's aging like fine wine. He is, I'm going to go to prison for saying that, because he's very, very nice to look at. He looks like he's 17 years old. Keep, keep, keep your pants there, <laughs> Sue. Come on now. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> and just started doing some snake movies, which of all the animal movies, snake movies are my favorite. So we watched the wonderful Jaws of Satan. Yes, where I think I, I even gave like a little pit viper lesson in the middle of the movie. He's telling us, giving us some snake, uh, some snakes insights there. Yes, indeed. And yeah, I've just not been watching a lot. I mean, I, Pat and I went and blew through A Star Is Born, um, Hearts Beat Loud, which was absolutely fantastic, Seems and like Rocket Man. And yeah, just not really watching a whole lot. I just haven't had the attention span. That's fine. Um, yeah, I, I, I watched Hunter as well. I want to add a couple things to, to the conversation about that. You, you mentioned those two first, first two, two actors. I was watching it, and you know, <laughs> you're looking at it, the, the guy with, with the mustache and the, the, the smooth talking character of the show, and you realize that's Ted fucking Mosby from How, How I Met Your Mother. J Josh Wagner is the actor's name. I was like, is that? No, no, it's not. And then, yeah, it is. And Dylan Baker shows up on there. And it's just character yeah. actor overload, oh, overload, man. It's, it's, it's good. And I, I, I love I love the concept. And I love how slick it is and how serious it can be. It, it, I think uh, I was listening to the horror cast this morning and Tam, Tammy... Uh, but stop! Yeah, I'm making crying parts because it will. Because there's some genuine, there's some genuine tragedy in there. And uh, yeah, I have to admit there was one scene in the first episode, and it was 
terrifying, but I found myself laughing about it. And I like to call it the barbecue massacre. Yeah. <laughs> I could not help myself. I just I mean, was that, like, oh I mean, my God. That opening scene where, where, with Dylan Baker, where he's identified as, as a Nazi, this is the only way I'll, the only thing I'll give it away about the show is that, yes, Dylan Baker is an underground Nazi. And the, the switch, the switch just shows how much of a versatile actor he is. Because he, he's supposed to be like this milk toast you know, like, suburban uh, father-type character. Call me Biff. Yeah, and they call me Biff. And, you know, he makes the switch when he's identified by this this woman that comes to the house that, who's the wife of somebody that works for him. And, yeah, he makes that Nazi switch. And it's like, yeah, this is about as versatile as an actor as you could ask for. And I I love that. Um yeah, watch watch hunters. What are you doing? It's 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 awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a while since we did the show, so I I watched a few things that I'll mention. Come to Daddy was a big one that I I think uh any genre fan should see because uh this is the uh, a new Elijah Wood movie that stars him and uh Stephen McCaddy and Martin Donovan and uh if you don't know what this is. Elijah Wood gets a, a call or a letter, I forget which one it is, from, from his long-lost father. He hasn't, he hasn't seen him since he was five years old. He gets called out to his father's cabin in the woods, or like a state in the woods by, by the ocean. It's like a big old, how do you do? And um, you think it's that, and Stephen McCaddy is, is, is in the house, and he, he thinks he's his father, but I won't give any more away past that because after what happens happens, it goes fucking bonkers. And it's, I, I, I've said this in groups, Stephen McCaddy can, can uh, do more lying still as an actor than most actors can just talking because the man can emote like, like nobody's business. If you haven't seen Pontypool, you guys should run and go see Pontypool because it's a great film and... You get some good Stephen McCaddy in that movie, and oh god, I remember I went to a premiere for Pontypool. You get some good Stephen McCaddy in History of Violence. There's so many good things he's in, but um, yeah, Elijah Wood gives a good performance. Uh, I, I'd recommend it. I, I think it's really great. Um, like uh, Brian said, it's not really a, it's, it's not really a horror film per se, but it is a it's a good thriller. It builds some tension. Are pretty good. So go check that out. Uh, besides that, I uh, <clears throat> sorry. I I watched I watched some stuff. I watched. I'll mention the Jay and Silent Bob reboot because I I really didn't care for it all that much. It's it's there. I uh, yeah I kind of agree with you on that. I mean I know it was supposed to be kind of an ode to Jay becoming a father. Mm-hmm. I mean it's it's fan service, you know. Yeah. I, there there's a way there's a right way to do it. And there's a wrong way to do it in my opinion. You could you could litter it you could litter it in like a joke, you know. Every five or seven minutes, litter it in. But when, like, the whole movie almost is that, by the time you get to the end, there's an end, there's some part towards the end with Ben Affleck and Joey Lauren Adams, and they have a daughter now, and yada, yada, yada. And by the time you get to that, it's supposed to be so uplifting and so so, so, so satisfying, you just don't care, because after that, you get fucking Iron Bob, and it's so stupid. I, I, I can't, yeah. man. So there's some good, there's some good heartfelt stuff in there. But you have so much stupidity in there, and it's not even like, oh wow, this is this is really you know the stupidity is cool in most Kevin Smith movies. You know, I'm one of those people who defend to defend Tusk until my my dying day. I think it's like a, I think it's a great piece of cinema with a great <laughs> practical creature. But um, this it wasn't for me, and I I I I, I talked to a lot of Kevin Smith fans about this, and I tell them why I didn't care for it all that much. And they're either those people who say, well, you're just fucking stupid. Or like you got the 70% of the people who say, you know what? I sort I sort of agree with you, but I didn't feel that way. And I say, I respect that because you watched yeah. it in a different way than I watched it, you know? And, um, I, I'll give them that, uh, <laughs> to say that, um, I did, you know, while I was away, cause this is something I do sometimes. I, I ran through all, all of 30 rock again for like the third time. And this is a show I love like parks and rec. You know, which liberals and conservatives can watch it and pretend that those jokes are made for them, but not realize that that show is making fun of you. And, you know, that they, you got to love that kind of comedy. 
to say, yeah, you're make. It's kind of like the the the, the same group Lord. When when little teenage girls listening to Lord and like oh they're singing they're singing just for us like no Lord is making fun of you listen to the lyrics a little bit closer okay because that's, yeah, that's Parks and Rec yeah Parks and Rec man back, I think back, back to the heartbeat loud thing again <laughs> yeah it I was nice seeing a different side of Nick Offerman it was such a good movie I just I cannot recommend this movie enough and I'm probably on my third viewing of the entire series now, probably more. Yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, I still enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah, I got one of my favorite episodes is the uh, the Sebastian concert after little Sebastian passed yes. away. And I can get bye bye little Sebastian stuck in my head. Adam, Adam Scott's reaction to, to uh, letters to Cleo was like one of those priceless things I've ever seen in my life. Okay, it's it's kind of lovely, <laughs> yeah. You know. And when he loses the job and does his little claymation thing, oh, oh my yeah. god, it's pretty funny. His obsession with calzones, you know. Yeah, <laughs> but Rob, I mean, everybody in this sh- Rob Lowe's <laughs> over positivity. Yeah, and I'm watching him in Lone Star, mm-hmm. and he is literally Chris Traeger as a fireman. Nice. Did you watch? Did you watch Super Troopers two yet? Not yet. There's, he's in there as like the like the like the dirty like sheriff in a way of uh, the, oh, the, the Canadian town to take of. There's a scene where they go into a, a a a strip club, a gay strip club, and he's flicking this dude's dick through his pants. I laugh every time it comes on. You have to, you have to watch this now, see? It's, it's hilarious. I'm definitely going to have to watch this now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, anything else? I'm trying to think here. We talked about Hunters, which is, again, high recommendation. Um, there's there's other stuff, too. Like I said, it's been a long time since we recorded the show, and I, I, I have other stuff in, the, uh, in my brain, I'm sure, that I've watched. It's just, um, I'll give one more look through real fast, and I'm going to... And then we're gonna move on. So it's like you could think amongst yourself for about two seconds, and uh, yeah, it's good stuff, you know. Oh, I just, oh yeah, I know what I watched. I watched Space Truckers because it's a, it's a Stuart Gordon film that doesn't get enough love with people. I think this was a HBO original movie, you know, back in the day when they first started doing those. And it's got it's a sci-fi movie slash comedy movie which stars Dennis Hopper. And Stephen Dorff and Debbie Mazar when she was still smoking hot, and it's it's about a, a, a trucker who's uh, inadvertently transporting a load of of, of uh, sentient robots through space, and you, you gotta love Dennis Hopper just being a crazy like guy in a in a in a, in a trucker uh, in, in a truck that flies through space. This I, I call this film uh, everything that Spaceballs wanted to be. Because if you thought Dr. Mittenhands was funny in, in Leprechaun 4, in Leprechaun in Space, this has Charles Dance, who gets blown up, and now he's half-robot, with, 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 a, with a dick, with a robot dick that works only with a ripcord. Oh my god. And, and the ripcord malfunctions. <laughs> I'm sure this isn't something he talks about a lot, but it's fucking hilarious to me, you know. Uh yeah, I've had a thing for Debbie Mazar for a long time. That 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 fulfills a lot of needs. That movie, <laughs> so there's that. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that, and uh, I'm gonna uh, move on to the next segment of the show, entitled "The Beef Bitches and Mashed Potatoes." Okay, who gets the burly uh, beef? I ordered barbecue beef. I think that's mine, but I didn't order fries. Barbecue beef. Mine's the juice deluxe. Okay, who gets the burly beef? Suzanne, what you beeping about, girl? Yeah, it's been kind of funny. I, for some reason, my seasonal depression this year, I've just started getting really mean. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically bitching about myself. Usually, I just get like a little melancholy for having all the lights off. But this year, for some reason, if somebody says something I even remotely find off-putting, I am in for the kill. So hopefully that will get better, and that's pretty much. I'm only complaining about myself. Well, that's that's the first step, really, to admitting you have a a bug up your ass. I guess. I know. <laughs> and I mean that out of love, Sue. Okay, you know. Oh, I know 
you do. <laughs> really? Yes, I mean, that, I, mean, I mean that out of love. I know you want to attack me. I just want to let you know that, that I mean that out of love. <laughs> you know, you ain't got to bug up your ass with me at all. It's just I, I'd imagine some people who, who would cross you in the wrong way would say, hey, 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 hey now, you know. Yeah. And then I say, calm down, Sue. Don't, don't, yeah, I know. Don't be catty, Sue, okay, you know. Oh, I know, and you've had to tell me that quite a bit this winter. Look, like, before you start, don't be catty, Sue, okay? Don't do not don't do that. Okay? <laughs> yeah, but at least I know I have the issue, and I'm doing my best to correct it. Yes. But, damn, sometimes it's really, really difficult. Yeah, sometimes, like, fuck them bitches, man. You can't, can't deal with it, you know. Yeah. Not that I call women bitches. I can't, oh, you know. Unless oh, please, it's one I call that, some men Unless there's one that really, really deserves it. That, you know, I, I do restrain myself quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's some men that I call bitches because they get whinier than most women I know. Some of them do. Yeah, I agree, you know. I work with a guy at work. I'm pretty sure has no testicles left at all because his wife controls him that bad. Oh, my God. Does she yeah. detach them when he leaves the house? No balls left. Suzanne, this, she, she she dresses this man, I can tell, because some days they come in and they match, okay? Oh, dear Lord. You can, t- <laughs> you can tell that she leaves his, her, his clothes off for him before they go to bed or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. I mean, once in a great while, Pat and I will, we've got like three t-shirts that are similar or match. Uh-huh. And it's usually just a straight up fluke when we end up wearing the same t-shirt out together. I, I work here for for a newspaper agency. We we, we did deliver papers out of the building I work at, and this is a husband and wife team that have uh, a route themselves. I have heard and verified reports that she parks on one side of the street and makes that man run down the block. Okay, so that's how much balls this guy doesn't have. You got no balls left. <laughs> oh my god! You got no balls left. I'd say fuck you very much. You know. <laughs> Oh, shit, that's terrible. <laughs> so if this is you, if you're the man or, or the woman or the, you know, whatever you are in this relationship, I want to include everybody in this situation. And you got you to grow some balls, metaphorical or real, you know, t- tell your lover to fuck off every once in a while. Yeah. You're, you're going over the line here, honey, okay? You're going over the line. <laughs> and um, I think you guys would be better for it. I mean, but, 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 hey, if you're in that situation that I'm talking about, it's too late. It's too late, you know? It's, it's kind of like the kid, that, the 10-year-old, that you didn't whoop when they were two years old. So now if you whoop them now, it ain't going to matter because they haven't learned learn anything, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It should be, should be equal partnership, you know? Unless you're a sugar mama, then I'll, I'll, be, a, I'll be a kept man for the white woman. I keep saying this to people, you know? Be a lot of yes ma'am and no ma'am. <laughs> see, that's called a bitch, but that's called a, a, a well-off bitch, see? So it's, it's kind, kind of worth it to me, you know? I don't know. It sounds strange. Oh, yeah. My problem's a lot smaller. Well, it's, it's a bigger problem, you know, because I didn't watch this show because I found out what happened. But the yeah, my beep is with um, the WWE and all their, their fucking suckiness right now. I mean, they had this, this show in Saudi Arabia, which is their big show because uh, it's, it's like three times more, more economically viable than WrestleMania. So it makes a lot of money. They fly the wrestlers overseas. The last one they had, they had the first women's wrestling match ever in Saudi Arabia, which, which was a big thing. Um, but this time around, they chose, you know, from a business standpoint, and I'll explain this in a second, to let Goldberg become the Universal Champ, who's like 50 some years old, and let Undertaker win this this match. It really didn't mean anything, but the, but the point is they, they, they let him win this. They didn't let, let, let somebody else do the finish. And he's like almost 60 or he's close to 60. And um, they're doing this thing that I hate, well, they don't let the young guys, like, thrive. And it, it's really annoying that nobody gets the push that they, they're supposed to have. And the reasoning for this is that WWE Network is selling their pay-per-view rights to ESPN+. Plus, Which means you're getting that, if you pay $10 a month for the network, you get the pay-per-views for free as, as they air. But now, you have to spend five more dollars a month for ESPN+. Plus and another 80 bucks or something for the pay-per-view. Now, if your product sucks, and they, they it does suck. I mean, people complain about all the time, you know, who they're putting over, and they know exactly why they're putting over these people. Because back in the day, you didn't know any of this information. You didn't have the internet. You assumed 
that Roddy Piper and Jimmy Snuka hated each other. You know, that, that kind of thing. It was, it's called kayfabe, you know, which they weren't allowed to travel together. They weren't allowed to do anything together. But you, you were under the assumption, as a fan, that these people disliked each other to, to an extent now. But now that you have these things, what they call the dirt sheets, you're, you're privy information about how, how business goes and why they did this and what they did this for a financial reason or yada, yada, yada. I prefer to go back to the good old days where I didn't know. But now it's just a bad product. He wants to charge you more money for it for the pay-per-views. And I think personally, he's going to see how small they are compared to UFC when they start charging 70 bucks for a pay-per-view, whatever it's going to be, because their viewership is going to fucking suck. And I hope their stock goes way, way down. And I hope somebody gets fired that's supposed to get fired. Like the old man, you know, Vince McMahon. I hope, I hope he, he lets himself down by saying, okay, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm out of touch with my fans and I, I shouldn't do this anymore. And I realize it's sports entertainment, but it's it's upsetting to somebody who has been a fan of, of this sports entertainment since he was five years old. has been watching off and on since then, I'd say. But, you know, I've had moments where I stopped watching it, but a lot of folks stopped watching it. And they're going to AEW, which, you know what? It's it's good and all. They're doing a lot of stuff there that they're not doing over here. But then, again, it's it's like the Ritz Crackers thing, the Eddie Murphy analogy. Just because it's better doesn't mean it's nothing you haven't seen before. Because they found a lot of beats that WCW had back in the day, and it's not crazy different. But since WWE sucks so bad, and their business model sucks so bad, yeah, they, they're, they're loving it, and I, I'm just really annoyed by this, and a lot of folks are annoyed by this, and... Yeah, I I think they're just gonna their their stock is just gonna drop, drop. Oh my god, it's it's crazy, Suzanne. I can't believe this. You know. Yeah, I don't. I I used to watch it when I was younger, and I mean, I, I, I you and several of my friends are big wrestling fans, and I, I I have not heard anybody have anything positive to say in about a year about it. It just it it just seems like it's the the whole thing is just tanking. Hmm. And I was on mute again, sorry. But um yeah. <laughs> that's, that's about my beef really, you know. Life in general and that, you know, just sucking ass. Whatever. <laughs> we are here tonight though. To do a show. Um it talks about, you know, I, I guess the sins of the guineas, I guess you would call it. I was gonna call it guinea infidelity. <laughs> But that's only part of one of the movies that we're going to watch. You know, I mean, we're probably a small part of one of the movies, but a big part of another, the other movie we're going to watch. Which we're doing Black Billy the Tarantula, which is a giallo, of course. And we're doing Moonstruck, which is that share film, which uh, I'm going to call that Olympia Dukakis film. We're going to talk about that, though, that I love her so much. But um, we're going to get into the bloody and gory one first, because we're going to do them in, uh, I think, our... Uh, uh, chronological chrono- order. I was looking for the word. Chronological order. Yes, indeed. Sorry. My words, my words are lost today. Chronological order. <laughs> do Black Belt, Belly of the Tarantula first. We'll do that right after the trailer. Night. A time for quiet. A time for evil. Behind the door. Through the window. A time for terror. A terror that leaves a tiny clue, a pattern of blood repeated again and again and again. Don't make a move. your most secret moments. How do you escape 
a death that comes in the night like some monstrous ancient ritual. MGM presents The Black Belly of the Tarantula, a gothic tale of terror and death. Tarantula from 1971, a series of victims are paralyzed after having their bellies ripped open, much of the same way tarantulas are killed by a by black wasp. The victims all seem to be having a connection with a spa. Yeah, yeah, there, there's, there's, um, it's interesting, I'll, I'll, to say the least, and Suzanne, you can lead on this one, uh, but tell us what you think about the movie. You know, this is, this is my wheelhouse. I love the Italian Giallo movies, and I think this is one of the finest examples of one you've got everything you've got the, basically your police procedural and of course you have to go straight just the on the outside of it it was a big thing especially after the success of dario's movies bird with crystal plumage that they would always just take an animal and toss it into the title since you have black valley of the tarantula and, okay, all of that aside, not going to go into a giallo lesson or we'll be talking for the next two hours. <laughs> but you've got a just an amazing cast in this movie. I mean, there are so many Bond connections. I'm going to just kind of gla- you know, gloss over the actors first. Yeah, you've got Giancarlo Giannini, who was, he was also in the movie Hannibal, but he was in Casino Royale and Juan of Solace. And you've got no less than three Bond girls in this movie. If this does not make from some stunning scenery, then you guys need to have your damn heads examined. But you get to see, you know, these women who are, who are all, I guess, vaguely connected to the spa because whoever wrote that little synopsis of the movie completely missed everything. <laughs> and just being stabbed in the neck with this thing that paralyzes them so they're basically they're they're conscious and paralyzed and are watching themselves and feeling themselves die so that's you know you got your brutality it's another thing that's a hallmark of giallos you just have these very lurid you know a lot of times some of the time sex driven crimes so you just you usually get a lot of skin in these movies and let's take a look at the whole the movie as a whole. I mean, it's it's got that for the time, just this modern and chic setting to it. You've got a really great rooftop chase, which was shot beautifully as well. I love that. Got a little dummy. I love it. I love a good dummy fall too. So there's that. You know. Oh, I know. And they accidentally broke a window with that dummy. Yes. And they left it in. I'm like that is awesome. And what I love, I've always liked Giancarlo Giannini. He's got that kind of, you know, I've read a few places that everyone thinks he looks bored, but I think he's just playing up his part really well because these murders are just completely affecting his life, his marriage. He's disconnected and he's just, you know, getting desperate. And then the guy, the murderer starts targeting him and his wife. So that adds the personal level to it. And they also threw in just a little bit of some uh, scientific mumbo jumbo. Well, you know, it works you know? for the it works for the film though, because the way Oh it does. I, I thought this was so creative, you know, how they, they you know, instead of like, let's put animal in the title, they actually used the, the, the their title, you know, and worked it in a way with their killer. Like you said, he paralyzes them with the needle with the venom from the wasp. They get, somehow he extracted this venom from the wasp. And um like, and just everything you said, they, they could see themselves getting cut open with that beautiful, you know, uh, red Italian blood from the 70s, you know? Oh, I know. That's, that's my favorite shade of red, Italian 70s stage blood. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard me tell people that. Yeah. By the, way, just... by the way, I was calling that guy not Richard Benjamin the whole movie, okay? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's for me. If anybody is not all that familiar with it or is wants to dip their toe in, this is a great starter giallo because it's not all that hard to follow. It's it, it keeps you invested throughout just with the just with the the the, the look and the score by Ennio Morricone. Yes, not, and, not, not his best work, but it's there, you know. Yeah, it's got it it. Which is it works it, it really works for the movie though. Yeah. It's one of the like I said, it's one of the better giallos that I've seen and I've seen God so damn many of them. But I enjoy this one. The director, I really wished he'd done more. You know, he did the Mondo Connie and Women of the World, which were basically the predecessors to Faces of Death, but he never really went back into Giallo and it's I think it's a shame because this is a damn good giallo and shoot there's oh yeah my other thing um the the spider the the tarantula the black one that's a little pink toe tarantula when i was trying to get past my fear of spiders um my i know somebody who breeds tarantulas and they're like pink toes are the most docile so yeah they try to make a little docile tarantula be the scariest thing in the entire movie I have to admit, and only because I know this as fact, that I had to giggle a little bit at it. But just so you know, it's a pink toe. At least, at least they look real. It's not like those tarantulas in the Beyond were HD. Oh, yeah. oh God! H- HD does not help the tarantulas in the Beyond. It does not. Okay. Oh God, no! It really, really, really doesn't. As oh much as, my God! As, as much as I love the Beyond, that tarantula scene's a fucking hot mess. It really is. Yeah, I just I. Really, really dig this giallo. Like I said, it's a great starter giallo. If anybody wants to start, you know, it, it, like the giallos are their own thing. It's like it, it, they're like it's the Italian version of film noir. Yeah, but just a little bit more lurid, a little bit more bloody, and a lot more skin. Yep, naked. You get you you get a beautiful Italian buns two minutes into this movie, just just hanging out, you know. Oh, yeah. And it's like you could set a sundial by how much the screen goes away from the boobs in certain scenes. And it, as a man, you know, I, I appreciate that kind of stuff. Maybe you, you as a woman appreciate that, too. But, you know, it's <laughs> I don't know. It's 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 a hell of a way to start a movie. You know, a girl got her butt massage and just hanging out. You know, it's, it's 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 a it's a lovely way to start a movie. But I mean, yeah, I just was still when I was. Oh, oh God, no. I'm, no, no sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just I was really surprised when I was like watching it going through and just noticing all of the all the bond actors yeah and i'm they damn i really don't have much more to add to that uh, the, the lovely barbara boucher you know and Catherine bach yeah that one too yeah oh my god or, sorry barbara bach yeah barbara bach not, yeah. Catherine. not uh daisy duke not daisy duke she would she would fit well in this uh this girl with non-flat asses too though it's good stuff but uh <laughs> <laughs> me yeah you know my history with jollies I'm not huge on them because I'm I'm not big on the way that that they end. Sometimes the end is just kind of like even even this end, they do that that thing. This is this. And I've had this discussion before about why I love and hate Psycho, the movie Psycho. They do that thing at the end of Psycho where they overexplain everything about Norman Bates, and then at the end of this movie, you have this info dump about I'm not going to give away the killer, but he's somebody you've seen walking around the spa this whole movie. And you know it's, it's like it's so obvious now who the killer is. You know it's yeah. <laughs> but um, not really though. But uh, I don't want to give that away. Like I said, but the film, you know, it's 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 kind of like um, it's 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 like like Suzanne said, it's one of the more easier gi- giallos giallos to watch if you're if you're a guy who doesn't like giallos because it moves incredibly well. It's incredibly paced. There's beautiful women everywhere that you know we're gonna die. It has a classic, you know, uh, secluded killer who's not wearing black gloves. He's wearing, like, jaundiced uh, rubber gloves in this oh, movie. Oh, God. Those, it's like the really see-through but very creepy-looking surgical gloves. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like, like transparent, like, rubber gloves in a way. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. They're, like, almost like, like a clear yellow in a way. And I think, like, seeing... Seeing the the fingernails and stuff, you know, in the movie makes what he's doing all that much more creepy. I don't know if that's a thing well, for you, but, you know. 
Well, I mean, it's, I guess it's, you're giving a little bit more definition mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, the straight up black glove killer. Um, there's a J&B sighting, I must say, in this movie. There's at least one that I noticed. And uh, that's always de- needed in films like this for some reason. Um, <laughs> um, our our, our uh, detective uh, works really well. He's not, it's not really that boring, the, 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 the procedural stuff. Because it, it can get pretty tedious sometimes, some of these movies. But this is yeah. pretty much straight to the point about this is our killer. This is how he does people in. Which is brutal as hell, because not only does he paralyze them with the needle, he and he cuts them up. Before that, he just he's just beating the crap out of them. And when you see, oh, yeah. uh, when you see how tiny the guy is, again another little problem. When you see how tiny the guy is, I'm going to call it the Mrs. Voorhees uh, s- syndrome here. He's kind of a really skinny dude. You can't see how he'd be so powerful and imposing over these women, but he brutalizes them before he paralyzes them. Yeah. And, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty great as far as like uh be like that sort of stuff. And I do if I'm gonna watch Giallo, it's it's gonna be brutal. You know, I've seen some ones that are just really really boring to me. That some people would say are maybe are works of art. It's just they're just not for me. They're, in, they're for you, I'm, I'm glad for that. But this they're not for you. But this one, this one is for me. And I I would say that it might be for you if you're a, a, a Giallo novice. To, to dive into Black Belt and Tarantula, it's one. It's one of the best ones that there is that I've seen. I've seen about twelve. I'm not a big oh God. fan. These, yeah, I know. I need to see more. I guess, but it, it's, it's going to happen. I'm sure. Well, like but, I said, um, Giallo is just like that. That cut. It's it's not for everybody, and like I said, it's just a completely different style. And some people like it, some people don't. It's like the end of Bay of Blood. I was all in for Bay of Blood until that really stupid ending. I was like, this is how this movie ends, really? You know? It's, it's, uh, <laughs> this is so stupid. But, um, yeah, the info dump I've never been a fan of. Like, dude, let's just throw in everything we know about this killer, you know, at the end of the Oh, movie. yeah, the fact and, that, oh, his wife emasculated him and yeah. blah, 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 blah. So he took it out on these women from the spa. yeah. And blah 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 blah. Yeah, I I really don't care for the info you know, dump myself. I mean, if they a, like throw. A, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm just saying that's just uh, it just seems in a way because they they do it all the time now, mm-hmm. and for me, it's you're wasting my time. I would like to find out like s- slower, you know, like throughout the film, like litter some stuff in. It's kind of like yeah, it's kind of like just, a, ga- a game of Clue. You 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 go different room to room, and you you find you eliminate this, you eliminate that. But this just like, yo, know, by the way, this guy is the killer we, we, you've seen in this whole movie. So it's so obvious now. It's the obviously not saying it's obvious, but you know, you're thinking, if you're, if you're like somebody who says, oh, that guy's just been, been walking around the whole movie. It's so obvious now. Somebody might say yeah. that. I'm not going to say that because it's not obvious. You know, um, but that info dump has always annoyed me. <clears throat> it annoyed me in, 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 a, in, a, in a shit top 20 films of all time on people's lists, you know, psycho and annoyed me there too. And, mm-hmm. but you, you didn't get, yeah, that, you didn't get that great ending. Like you get with psycho though. You know, the whole, cause Tony Perkins can sell, sell, sell me with a smirk any day of the week. And he sells you with a smirk at the end of that movie. And, Oh yeah. But, um, yeah, this is good though. That's also, I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, I keep yeah, interrupting. No. And uh, I must say that, uh, there's beautiful, I, it's gotta be the blue underground, uh, Blu-ray print of it on on Amazon Prime right now. Both of these films we're going to talk about are on Amazon Prime right now to watch. So it'd be real easy for you guys to go check them out, along with another, a bunch of other Italian goodies. If you even dove into, uh, I know a lot of like the independent stuff is left Prime, like the uh, stuff like that. But there is tons and tons of horror films on Amazon Prime to watch, and uh, a lot of Italian stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of long lost gems on Prime. I have been so surprised. But yeah, um, Suzanne, anything else you'd like to say about Black Belly the Tarantula, and what do you give it one to ten? You know, like I said, this is just one of the the best of the giallos to have come out. I think highly of this movie. I enjoy it. It never, even though I know who the killer is, I don't care. It's still just a beautiful movie to look at. The characters, I, I love Giancarlo Giannini. I well, I didn't realize how many things because I kept looking and going, I've seen him in some, hell, I've seen him in a lot of stuff. And he's just a great 
actor and he sells he sells the haggard police inspector yeah i really enjoy yeah. it this like i said for me this is a straight up this is an eight cool yeah i'm with you with that eight yeah uh, i'll agree with that you know it's, it's, it's about as fluid as any gl i've ever seen and uh i can't say that about a lot of films like this that i've seen because there's some some real lulls in some of them and um mm-hmm and some real silly stuff in some of them. This is this takes itself pretty seriously and rightfully so. I think the spa is a great, great, uh, a great, um, a great tool to to use as far as like finding the beautiful women and the women of all. The, like the one, the first one was a uh, adulteress. The second one was a drug addict, drug addict. So they're all they're all you know all all done something bad in their own sense. You know, we'll get into mm-hmm. more guinea infidelity more in the next movie, but um. Yeah, but the, the, I I like that that that's like almost the motivation for him picking the girls that he picks until of course the detective starts rubbing his nose. He's getting too close, so he's got to start taking out people around him. And yeah, I, I like I like it. I like it, man. I love, I love the brutality of it, and I don't love people getting beat up. But this is fiction, people, so I could I could take it in fiction, and um. Hopefully nobody ever gets the idea to take acupuncture needles and paralyze women and cut them open. You know. Or some sick yeah, that would people. be bad. Or some sick people. Yeah, that would be bad. We don't we don't endorse that. Okay, <laughs> we just enjoy watching it on screen. Okay, and just, yes. uh, that's not, not wrong with that, peoples. But um, yeah, we're both giving an eight. Um, but next up, we're gonna talk about Cher and Nick Cage and their transgressions and you know with Moonstruck right after the trailer. <laughs> The moon brings the woman to the man, capisci? The moon is a little like love. Will you marry me? I will marry you. I will be your wife. You love him, Loretta? No. Good. When you love him, they drive you crazy. Sometimes. Why are you marrying Johnny? He's a fool. It makes you act a little crazy. Romantic. You got a love fight on your neck. Your life's going down the toilet. You'll have your eyes open for you, my friend. I have my eyes open. I'll say no more. You haven't said anything. Ah, que bella luna. You ruined my life. That's impossible. You ruined my life. Look, it's Cosmo's moon. Why do men chase women? Nerves. I don't want to talk about it. That moon. That crazy moon. Now you talk. I love you. What? Snap out of it. I'm confused. They say there's nothing new under the sun. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. (sighs) But under the moon, that's another story. Do you love him, Loretta? Ma, I love him awful. Oh, God, that's too bad. Cher, Nicolas Cage, in a Norman Jewison film. A la familia, eh? A la familia. Moonstruck. Moonstruck from 1987. Uh, your pl- cheap plot synopsis is this. Loretta Castorini, a bookkeeper from Brooklyn, New Brooklyn, New York, finds herself in a difficult situation when she falls for the brother of the man she has agreed to marry. Oh, this star Cher and Nick Cage. Uh, the amazing uh, Olympia Dukakis. God, this film. Reminds me so hard of my grandmother when I see this character. Danny Aiello, a Vincent Gardenia, John Mahoney, and a whole bunch of Italian character actors that, that you've seen their face. I, I forget. Oh, here we go. Julie Bavasso, who plays uh, t- t- Tony's mother in Saturday Night Fever. So, like, yeah, I just kept thinking the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the dad yelled at the table, one pork chop, one! You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank, you know. <laughs> oh, this this uh directed by Norman Jewison and um yeah, I'll get into it right right away cuz why why I picked this is cuz this show was originally going to be about Guinea and fidelity and and this film touches hard on that, but at the same time it touches on like the Italian superstition, you know, and Italian like, you know, traditions and 
you know, it, it's it's um just Italian, you know, customs in general as far as like love goes and family goes, and this hits a lot of spots for me. But I don't want to deep dive into this right this second, so I'm going to ask Suzanne because I never asked this question before. Suzanne, what do you think of Moonstruck? You know, I actually saw this in the theater when it came out. And it's if you do not have a big ass grin on your face from the time the movie starts, there is something wrong with you. This was like the I think one of the second, probably the second or third, probably the third movie I ever saw Nicolas Cage. And now I can see where he gets that like insane kind of crazy look in his eyes when he's doing other things because it started right here in Moonstruck. And because I just I love I love the character of Loretta. It's so completely different from most of what Cher does. She's usually this, you know, beautiful woman and she starts out just kind of gray hairs, just kind of being a bookkeeper, doing this, doing that. But she really, really, really shines in this movie. And Danny Aiello, who, once again, I'm not used to seeing him in a role where he plays somebody who's kind of plain, So he's fantastic as well, running off to care for his dying mother in Sicily. And then my favorite little side character of the whole movie is John Mahoney. I mean, there are a lot of scenes that take place at this restaurant around the corner from where everybody lives. And John Mahoney is a professor and, you know, got a young co-ed with him every time he's there. Then he says something stupid, girl gets pissed, throws a drink at him. And then he, the, the best line in the movie is like, yeah, can you just remove every trace that, of her existence and bring me a double vodka? <laughs> He's just striking out every time, you know. And then he, in that one short scene, just develops this little, I, I can't say relationship, but, you know, maybe this one true meaningful conversation with Olympia Dukakis, who... That woman should be in every movie. She is so good in everything that she's in. And she used to be one of the callers that used to call in to Frasier's show on Frasier. Oh, yeah. Oh, you could tell that voice anywhere. But, I mean, there's this cast is just spectacular. And it's just, it's so romantic. And, I oh, oh my God, I just, I'm really going to start pulling up the, the, the Saurus trying to find descriptors for it, but it's just, it's just a wonderful movie. I'm a huge fan of Norman Jewess in any way. He did some of the greatest movies like Rollerball. Oh yeah. He did the night. If, but fuck Fiddler on the Roof. Everyone has seen Fiddler on the Roof at least five I, times I, in the childhood. I, I have not seen it once. It's, it's, it's on the list, you know? And this movie also won three Oscars. Cher got an Oscar. Olympia Dukakis got an Oscar and the writer got an Oscar. And the, I swear, this was just a had to be a shining moment for the writer because he did stuff like Congo, Joe versus the Volcano, uh, The January Man, and Doubt Alive. Because I was going through, but, you know, checking him out to see what else he did. And it's just, it just doesn't seem like he ever did two movies that were the same, which, you know, I guess that makes him a fantastic writer. Yeah. But it's just, it, it's, a, it's just a great, happy, bizarre movie and it is definitely this is a new york city italian just the, the you know you see children live in the house until they're married and as you said about the superstitions you didn't have your wedding in a church so it was doomed from the get-go and you know just it's the ending of the movie where everybody is coming together and it's like the my favorite thing though because i remember this from some of my family gatherings you know, people just randomly come in and it's like coffee. Coffee starts going around and, well, do you want something to eat? So all the women will all of a sudden gather and just food appears. So it's just, it's just kind of like, it's, it's such a warm and fun movie. I'm probably just going to leave it at there and let you take over. It's cool. No, like I said, I, I love, I love the little stuff about this. The, the little monologues that, that appear in this movie, like when, um, Cher is going to see her her her, her fiance. Loretta's going to see her fiance off at the airport, and she's having the conversation with the woman who hates her, <laughs> who has a grudge with her sister for fifty plus years. That says, "I put a curse on that plane. It's going to crash into the ocean." 
you know, she gives the whole speech about how how she hates her sister because of this one thing that she did. And this this is, you know, the the the, the reason for the season is her going to see Johnny Nicholas Cage's character is because him and him and his brother have have a feud for for over the smallest thing because he was going to get married and because he was going to get married you know Johnny accidentally puts his hand in the bre- in the bread slicer and he blames him for this because he was going to get married again again with the italian superstitions it's all over this fucking movie it's all over and my grandmother was the same fucking way and i i didn't i don't i don't, I don't get it until i watch movies like this or until I talk to other Italians like her. I don't know if Suzanne's aware of, of the Rosalind Dago connection in Rosalind, Rosalind Illinois. If you, if, you throw no. a, if, you, if you throw a stone, like I, I've, I've met people on the street that were Rosalind Dagos, okay? My grandmother was from <laughs> Rosalind. And they probably knew each other by some <laughs> eons and eons and eons ago. But, you know, there's, there's like that, that, that connection, and there's. This is a good turn to the goddamn good uh, Bronx Tale conversation that me and Dave Z had, but um, the 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 speech <laughs> that Nick Cage gives about bread in this movie is one of the best Cage performances ever. <laughs> I get it here. I shovel this dough and I make the fucking bread. Yada 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 yada. Oh, uh-huh. v- Vincent Gardinia talking about pipes. You know. Oh, they're. they're yeah. awesome. And then, and then you got bronze, which is good, but again, it'll break. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! And it just uh, that number was like ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Oh, oh, <laughs> the relationship that, that that Cosmo and 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 the wife have is the part <laughs> where he's li- she comes home, he's listening to the record, and she she has to she has to tell him that she's gonna marry, she's gonna get married, and. <laughs> Then you can wake up and go wake up the mother and tell her about it. And he goes back down and turn up the record. I'm gonna read I'm gonna read the quote because this sounds like my it must have sounded like my grandmother when she was a younger. He goes he's gonna he's gonna play that damn Vicky Carr record and when he comes to bed he won't touch me. I'd imagine this was a conversation that she's had before. So that's, <laughs> that's that's why this film hurts so much to watch because I just it just brings out it just it opens my eyes to stuff that I never noticed before with my with my Italian side of my family, and Olympia Dukakis' performance is a big part of that. And I, I love I love the fact that you know she she's she's kind of a trophy wife in a way, but not really. It's like the whole time Cosmo is cheating with this 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 woman, you know. Then he's taking her to the opera. He's, he's probably doing strange things to her, and I'm pretty sure that she knows. But she doesn't care because she still runs the house and she doesn't give a fuck. So the the whole thing where where there she's having the conversation with um oh what's what's the actor's name again from Fraser John um John Chicago, Mahoney yeah Chicago's own John Mahoney she's having the conversation with him she's not trying to get in his pants she's trying to straighten him out you know the whole time and he sees that like t- towards the way on the way home you know basically when she says this is where I live. And he realizes he's not going to get none. He realizes at that point that she's just, she's just there to, to, to guide him as a man. And it's usually what, what most Italian mothers do for you. If you ever had a conversation with one for more than five minutes, if, if you're wrong, they're going to tell you about yourself. And, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, the, at the very oh, end of the movie when she's talking to Cosmo and pretty much tells him it's like, end it. And he's like, and he just shakes his head. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was the final word. Cause, cause she there was runs no it. fight. She, she runs it, yeah. man, and she knows this the whole time. So that that's why you know she almost didn't care that he was cheating because eventually it, that, that that's gonna be very fleeting. He's gonna come back, and you know she she's gonna be there. You know, with, probably with a wooden spoon or something. Who knows? <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. But um, yeah, I, I love I love the grandfather character. You know, with the big bushy eyebrows, with the dogs, you know, it's, it's oh yeah. He, he again those those characters that that know that knows more than everybody else, and the the part where he takes him for a walk, and you see the symbol the symbol of the movie is called Moonstruck because you know the, the the bright moon symbolizes something as like an awakening, and he 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 makes the dogs howl with him at the moon, you know, like it's some sort of victory, and the dogs howl, of course, and 
Well, it's Naya Bark. Not Naya Barks, yes, indeed. Um, it's just a wonderful experience. And I, I, I will say, you know, if you're not a fan of romantic comedies, if you can't fall in love with these characters, I, I think there's something wrong with your soul. You, see, you need to give it a watch, you know, with your, your loved one or even by yourself, you know. And um, you, you might you might find something great, and I, I think you will. I know this is, I'm going to give a shout-out to um, Maddie and Andrew who did a... Um, Frygate's favorite movies of this, and this is a favorite of Maddie's. So, Maddie, I, I hope you're listening. You know that that we love the movie too. So, there's a uh, there's that, and um, I don't want to go too far right into this, but it's just a great time and a great young Nicolas Cage performance and a great reserved Danny Aiello performance and his mother. Yeah, like I said, I it, it wasn't. I just couldn't believe I, even watching it now because he always plays such a boisterous character and he's just kind of a average, bland kind of dude. Mm-hmm. I mean, the the scenes with his mother in Sicily, you know, she has, <laughs> she has the, 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 whatever they are, like the clergy by her, her, her bedside. Yeah. She's basically yelling at him, come on, let's get this over with, you know, to give her the last <laughs> rites, like she's going to die. You know, my grandmother swore she was going to die two years before she actually passed. It's going to be any day now. It's going to be any day now, she'd say, you know, and. I, I knew I knew it wasn't true, but the, the 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 fact that she was screaming at these these priests or whatever to to give to give her the last rites, it's like come on, let's get this over with. Maybe you laugh, maybe you laugh out loud. I gotta say, because it was just it's just over dramatic for for no reason. Okay. Yeah. You know? And then he was telling how she got up and made dinner and food for everybody, including herself. Yeah. Like that is so Italian. Oh my god. Makes me sad. It's kind of like that that chicken soup bit and and uh, hunt, the hunters. If you guys when you guys watch it, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Moonstruck is great. I'm gonna kick it back to Suzanne though and ask her anything else she'd like to say about it. Or what did she give a one to ten? You know, this is one of those rare movies that is damn near perfect in every aspect. There's something for everybody. It's just a great, great great little movie and it's really hard for me not to give it a 10 because it is so, so damn perfect cool. so I, you know what i actually think i'm just going to stick with that just it is it is a beautiful happy fun romantic great movie love this movie always have cool yeah i think i, I will throw one thing in there that, that nia Vardalos, you know she she's greek and you know she made the big fat greek wedding movie uh, she owes a lot to Moonstruck, you know, because without this movie, that movie probably would have never happened. I'm sure she she took a lot of inspiration from Moonstruck to use her Greek roots in in that movie, as they did the Italian roots they did in this movie. And um, yeah, so she 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 owes something there, and uh, I I like both things really. And um, but yeah, did this one is great. Like I said, it's another one of those things that you know makes me uh makes me feel my Italian roots all that much more. You know, I don't talk to my Italian family all that much, but you remember little things from, from when you were younger. You used to hang out with these people. It, it, you see it and stuff like this, and Goodfellas and Bronx Tale, and it it it, it hurts as an Italian to watch this movie because so much of the stuff that they're talking about, like I said, the superstitions, the traditions, the whole you know the idea of the trophy wife who runs the show. My my noni was the same way. She was a hundred percent Sicilian and. She was married to an Irish son of a bitch who was mean, and she just she took it in stride, man. And I I love her every day for it. But um, yeah, um, I, I'm gonna give it a ten as well, and because it's 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 damn near perfect from beginning to end. And um, we're gonna leave it at that. We're gonna come right back to close out the show. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, 
Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. And uh, that's our big Italian show, and I hope you guys dug it. Suzanne, uh, thank you for joining me for this. Uh, oh, anytime. Yeah. I got a announcement to make, slash uh, calling out to whoever's listening. Whoever's listening out there is the Pork Chop Express. Now I'm playing. Um, <laughs> uh, basically, we're, 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 I've been trying to get the show in every week. And and uh, I'll tell you why why we have it, because schedule, scheduling is hard. We had three people in three different time zones. Said I never made a, I made never made my beef ladies feel obligated to be here as far as like you know whatever. So if you're listening and you want to do you want a podcast, you know you you could reach out to me, and if, if Suzanne can't make it and Iris can't make it and Jamie can't make it or one of them can make it or whatever, and you want to come on and be the third person in this beef sandwich, you know, you guys can come on and do come on and do the show with us, and then we can get more content out to people. So if you're listening and you're bored or whatever. I could I could give you a list of shows we're doing next. It's pretty exciting stuff. If all goes to plan, I, I hate I hate announcing stuff on the show, so I'm not going to announce it here. What we're doing next because it might not be the next one. So, <laughs> but um, tentative plans for the next one. I'll talk to Suzanne after the show. But yeah, come on, I, it's going to be a, a real a real rotating panel, and I, I I I like it. You know, less stress on me. You know, less stress on my my co-hosts, and I uh I I like it. I like it like that. But, um, Suzanne, uh, tell the folks who you got coming up, girl. Oh, the NFW on Horophilia. And we are, as I said earlier in the show, we are going into Snake. So bring your love of Snake movies, and uh, I'll probably come up with some stupid information that will never do you any good ever about Snakes. Oh, you might, if you want to you own a Snake or something, but yeah. I, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's on the Horophilia Network. I'm on that show, too. And uh, I just became the third man for for now. And uh, Alex Edwards and Nudie's Hard to Kill podcast, or action commentary podcast. Um, if you want to listen to us talk about Uncommon Valor, you can look for that current episode on there. And um, that's there. And this show and the two drink minimum commentaries can both be found on legionpodcast.com. Check them out. Check out all the great shows on Legion. And um, yeah, that's that's a that's really about it for right now. Um, Next up, like I said, I don't want to say what it is, but I I kind of know what it is. Who is going to include? I don't know, but it should be fun either way. So, thanks for listening, and always remember the Sin Beef Podcast. If you got beef, we've got the grinder. See y'all next time. <laughs>